Before we jump into the episode today, I want to share something with you from my heart. First of all, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I really can't tell you how much your support means to me. We've been doing the podcast now for almost four years. I can't even believe it. And I'm so grateful for each and every single one of you that listens, shares an episode with your friends, sends me a DM or a text message letting me know how an episode resonates with you or any aha moments. Seriously, I couldn't be more grateful to be able to create this podcast. It has been such a blessing in my life and I love hearing the ways it's been able to provide value in yours as well. One thing you might not know is how much work it takes to be consistent with a podcast. In fact, did you know that the majority of podcasts don't make it past episode number 10? And we are well, 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 well beyond that. And it's just a lot thinking of the episodes, recording them, editing them, managing the guests, making sure that everything runs smoothly and gets uploaded consistently and regularly. And so that's why I have created an amazing opportunity for you to support the podcast monetarily. And in exchange for that, you will get exclusive premium subscriber content. So for as little as $3 a month, you can become a premium subscriber subscriber of the podcast. And every month I will upload new voice guided workouts and breathwork meditation audio for you. So that way you can work out with me coaching you in your ears. You can also take a moment to reduce your stress and relax and come down and ground down with one of my breathwork audios. So if that is on your heart to support the podcast for as little as $3 a month to become a premium podcast subscriber, I can't tell you how much that means to me and the growth of this podcast. I appreciate you. If you're interested, click the link in the description, become a premium podcast subscriber, new content every month. And while supplies last, I'll send you an exclusive podcast coffee mug so you can have your self-love and sweat coffee every morning. I appreciate you. Now let's get into the show. Welcome to Self Love and Sweat, the podcast, the place where you'll get inspired to live your life unapologetically, embrace your perfect imperfections, break down barriers, and do what sets your soul on fire. I'm your host, London Souza. Hey friend, it's me, London Souza, online lifestyle transformation coach. I help people all over the world just like you who know they are meant for more, get their mind right and their body tight and go from crazy busy to crazy happy. And hey, if it's our first time meeting, welcome. So happy to have you. And if you've been with us for a while, it's so great that you're here too. I'm really excited to share this episode of the Self Love and Sweat podcast with you. Hey, I want to tell you quickly about two ways that you can get connected beyond the podcast to up-level your health, your life, your fitness, reach your goals, but also support the podcast as well. So the first option is our self-love and sweat monthly members only meetup. We meet up on the last Saturday of the month on Zoom for 90 minutes to cover some important topics, to answer your questions, and then to also do a workout together. It's a great way to have that support, have that accountability, get supercharged and get reminded that there are other people all over the world on this journey of self-love and sweat and you don't have to do it alone. You can join your first month for only a dollar using code selflove1 at checkout and then it's $27 a month after that. So you go to lifelikelondon.com forward slash monthly, use the code selflove1 at checkout to try us out, test it out for only a dollar for your first month and then you can be on board to listen to the podcast, join up on the meetups, and just really feel like you're connected and thriving on this journey to reach your goals. The second option is our Strong at Home for Women eight-week dumbbell-only workout plan. We have women all over the world 
getting stronger from the inside out right at home, right? So we're ready to take action to get stronger despite the circumstances of the world. And we know that we're not about to do that alone. So embark on this eight week journey with us. You can go to lifelikelondon.com forward slash strong at home. You can pick up your eight week plan. And the exciting thing is that every eight weeks, we open it up, myself and my co-coach for VIP all access coaching with us. So not only do you get the plan, but you get Zoom fireside chats with us. You get an exclusive way to chat with us anytime so you can ask your questions, share your progress. Um, And we're always continuing to stay connected and motivate and inspire each other on our journey to get stronger, no matter what that means for us. So if you know that you're meant for more, you're ready to get stronger from the inside out, and you're just like, yes, I need a plan and some structure, something to tell me what to do. I know I'm ready, but I need that coaching. I can't do it alone. We are here for you. You can go to lifelikelondon.com forward slash strong at home, pick up the plan, figure out when our next VIP all access registration is opening so you can get that support and guidance. And the third thing, I said there was two, but the third thing is you can do both. You can join us for those monthly meetups. You can be there for the eight week program. You know, this coaching and this support is here for you. We want to get you real results that last so you never have to start over again. And so you guys are awesome. Enjoy this episode. Get connected. Self love and sweat, friends. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Self Love and Sweat the Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about New Year's resolutions and my take on them. And if I set them and if I coach my clients to have New Year's resolutions, um, I feel like for two reasons, I want to talk about this topic. Number one is because I feel like I've been getting this question a lot recently. Like three people in the last week have asked me, hey, London, do you have any New Year's resolutions? Do you set any New Year's resolutions? And then timing wise, it's the end of January, which is a time where a lot of people give up on their New Year's resolutions, or I would argue even don't remember what they even set as their New Year's resolution. So I feel like because I've been getting this question a lot, and also the time of year, I wanted to visit this topic. Um, Not at a time you would normally hear about it, right? We're like at the end of the first month of the year. But you know, I think that it still has this New Year magic. And even though, spoiler, uh, spoiler alert, I'm not super into New Year's resolutions, I still love the magic of a new year. So I think it's great to reflect on the previous year and then get excited and set goals and just really, you know, focus on how you want to show up and what you want to achieve in the coming year. I think it's great. I I love to do that too. I just feel like uh, New Year's resolutions are really limiting So it's kind of like, okay, pick one thing and decide right at the beginning of the year. And I just don't feel like people even really sit down and like brainstorm and really think about that of like, what resolution do I want to set for the whole year, right? So I think it's really limiting because we just like pick something and it's one thing. And I also think it's kind of, um, I don't really, yeah, like to live this way. And I don't like to coach this way. Like, I don't want to have one. And I know that we're constantly setting goals in different areas and just a new year's resolution is not our only goal of the year, but I don't want a new year's resolution to really be the parameter for success, um, for that year, you know, kind of based on action or inaction, depending on what your new year's resolution is. And so for that reason, for it being very limiting and just like people not taking the time to really think about what they want their new year's resolution to be. And then also once you choose something, having that be your, you know, did I succeed or did I not? Did I make it or did I not? Um, having that be what sets you up kind of for the whole year for me, it just doesn't do it. It doesn't cut it. And that's not how I like to coach and what I've seen. Um, it's not what I've seen actually work, right? Most people, the majority of people who set new year's resolutions, like don't even do it. The gyms are empty after a while. Like people just, yeah, they get super super pumped up and then they don't have the tools and strategies, which is why I love the one I'm going to share with you today to keep on keeping on ones that last ones that show up, you know, throughout all the seasons that will last the entire year, you know? Um, and so that's why I love doing this instead of setting new year's resolutions. So what is this? Um, So my answer to this question is no, I don't set New Year's resolutions. What I do instead is I set words that, uh, words of the year, words that uh, one or two words that really, um, yeah, 
describe how I want to show up that year that really are going to be like quick. You know, you think about that word and you just know what that means for you and how you want to show up in the world. Like that's what I'm looking for is those quick words that can really just bring to life for us in an instant, you know, a bunch of different times throughout the year, right? It's a whole freaking year, but like that really can give us that switch. Every time we think about that word, I want to show up as that word, right? So um, that's what I like to do. That's what I like to coach on our words of the year. So um, I'm going to tell you what your words of like some, uh, some pointers about your words of the year. And then I'm going to tell you what mine was last year. And the two, I actually have two this year for this year and how they kind of fit in to, uh, what I share with you. Okay. So your word of the year, it should be something that's really out of your comfort zone that when you think about being that embodying that particular word, um, it's not something that feels like second nature to you. Um, And I'll give you some examples. And then also it should really describe how you want to show up in a lot of areas of your life, right? So instead of just picking one uh, New Year's resolution, you actually get to choose a word or a couple of words that melt into, I always say melt into, but that, yeah, melt into and transcend into a lot of different areas of our lives. It's not just one New Year's resolution that might be focused on one key spot in our life, like health and fitness, weight loss, you know, all that type of like one key area. It could actually be one simple, quick, powerful word that can help and melt into and help you in many areas of your life. Okay, so um, out of your comfort zone a little bit and really describe how you want to show up. Like really, that word should really bring um, a lot of feelings of congruence with like, yes, that's exactly how I want to show up. Like, mm, that's what it feels like for me to really be in, in my space and in my area of genius and doing my thing, like that word. Um, okay, so the words I've chosen uh, before. So in 20, where are we at now? 2022. Uh, in 2021, my word of the year was connection. And that word was really powerful to me because it was really out of my comfort zone. Um a lot of people don't really believe this when I tell them, but I'm very much an introvert. Uh, when it comes time to being in uh, seasons of stress or transition or whatever, it's much more my nature to be a recluse and kind of step back a little bit. And so for me, the word connection, um, I knew that after moving back from Austria, going through a breakup, restarting my business, you know, figuring out where I was going to live, all this different kind of stuff. I knew that connection was something I was going to need to thrive and really continue to show up. And I knew it was something that wasn't in my nature to do, you know, just like by habit, you know, I'd rather just kind of like chill by myself and do my thing, you know? So that word was really a reminder for me, like, Hey, keep showing up. Don't forget to stay connected with others. Don't forget to meet new people and expand your network and expand your horizons and just stay, um, you know, yeah, stay focused on making those connections. Um, that's really how I wanted to show up in 2021. It was really important for me. Um, when you are a coach and maybe you're listening to this, a coach or a leader or whatever, um, it's like, you know, you only can grow and only can lead to the extent that you grow and lead yourself. And so for me, it was really important to continue to show up, continue to do the work for myself personally, professionally, all the things, um, and then continue to show up and be connected, you know, cause I know the power of connection. It's just not, my first thing I'm running to all the time. So that was my word of 2021. This year, I have two words. I couldn't decide on a single word. So I chose two. And I also chose to have those words, um, like, I also chose that like those words should exist together in the feeling, which I'll describe um, as often as possible. So my two words are relax and learn. So that's what I mean. I want to be like relaxing and learning as like the key focus of my year. That doesn't mean I'm not working and I'm not showing up and I'm not doing all the things, but relax and learn. So for me, relax is not something uh, that is my second nature. Uh, Relaxing is like, I mean, I'll relax in the evenings. I'm really good about getting good sleep and not staying up too late and having all the screens in front of me and things like that. But overall, I wouldn't describe myself, uh, 
yeah, innately relaxed. That's something I really have to, I really have had to work towards and um, just, yeah, work on showing up that way. And so um, I just feel like for the longest time, um, I lived in Austria and my lifestyle, I traveled a lot. It was go, go, go all the time. I also um, have unraveled a mindset that doing more and working more means you're worth more and you can, you know, you're, you're more enough if you do more. Um, and I really have found, um, yeah, I've really found meaning and relaxing and chilling and just loving on myself a bit more. And so, um, even though I don't feel like, um, you know, being relaxed is fully who I am yet or whatever. Um, I love that word and that idea of thinking every day, London, London, are you showing up relaxed and are you learning something, you know, when in doubt and things are getting frustrating and all the things like relax and what can you learn here? Um, learning from the situation, but also proactively learning. Like I love listening to podcasts and reading books and just learning from um, a lot of different sources. And so just reminding myself that like, chill out, relax. And then I really feel like learning is like a workout for your brain, you know? So whenever you feel any like lack of clarity, lack of focus, like the default is always like learn something, teach yourself something, read a few pages, watch a YouTube video, listen to a podcast, like do something, learn something, expand your knowledge. I feel like that's the equivalent for the brain and the mind of like, you know, a hit workout or really, um, you know, busting your ass in a sweaty workout and just kind of having that breakthrough there. I feel like it, uh, learning helps with get, getting rid of a lot of stagnance more than we probably uh, even realize. And so those are the two words that describe uh, how I want to show up this year. Um, and I was actually just having a really good conversation with a friend of mine. Um, and then she's an NLP practitioner. She's who I get my um, certification from. So I'm a life coach, an NLP certified practitioner, um, and a few other certifications I have through her. And she's so amazing. And I freaking love her. And we're getting ready to go into recertification again um, in February, this coming up month for two weekends in a row, um, in-person training, just like 10, 12 hours a day of just showing up, learning these techniques, working together, all of that. And so today her and I had a conversation preparing for that, um, for that, uh, coaching uh, session that I'll be participating in. And so we were talking, um, ha we had a 30 minute chat and, uh, she asks a lot of really great, uh, great questions as do all NLP practitioners. And she just always helps expand. Um, and she just kind of asked, you know, where do you kind of see yourself and where are you, um, you know, in the next years and just kind of like, where, yeah, where do you want to be? What are your goals? Where, how does that look like, um, you know, for you? And so for me, it was really, you know, I've always, I told her this too. I was like, I kind of struggled with that question in the sense that like, I don't know exactly like, you know, what the house is going to look like or the partner or the, you know, the car or the, the whole, you know, exactly how much money or how men, like for me, um, when I think about future or even now and just moving forward, I really resonate a lot more with, and I've found that helps me just, you know, so much more, um, on the feeling. So how do I want to feel? I want to feel like I'm relaxed and learning, right? Chilled out and like expanding, um, yeah, I'm expanding my mind. Um, and for me, it's much more of knowing if something is right for me or if that's the next step based on knowing those feelings and knowing, you know, what I want to feel in my life, what those feelings of happiness and satisfaction and connectedness and living, like what that really feels like for me. And then matching that feeling with the feeling I get when I'm presented with said next thing, right? So for me, it's really much more familiarity with the feeling I want to feel in the next five, 10 years or whatever. Um, that really fires me up and that really keeps me kind of focused. Or let's say it's kind of like the, when you go bowling and you have the, um, like the, blockers up the gutter blockers so that your ball doesn't go in there. It's kind of like those words keep me like in bounds, if that makes sense. And so, um, today actually, uh, after my meditation this morning, I wrote down some more words that just describe how I want to feel. And so I don't feel like you should, um, limit yourself to, um, you know, one new year's resolution. I also don't think you should limit yourself to just one word that describes how you want to feel. Although I think it's super helpful. And I think that just choosing one is more than enough 
stuff. And it's really great to have that focus and clarity and be like, am I showing up, you know, relaxed and learning? Am I showing up with connection at my forefront? Um, I think it's also great to journal about like, what are some other words that describe how I want to show up in this world? What's really that feeling I want to feel regularly? And how can I spend time, you know, writing down those words and feeling those words? So that way, when I, you know, come across them again, it's like, oh, it's familiar. It's like, yes, that feels right. That sits right with me. I know, you know, that's, you know, congruent with the feelings I want to feel this year. And that's really what I work towards is the feeling. Okay. So some words I wrote down, I do meditation a lot with Dr. Joe Dispenza and often what he asks in his medita- meditation is, um, <laughs> I'm going to do my impression of his voice, but he's like, who do you want to be? when you open your eyes, like his voice is really good. The music is great. Um, and when he coaches, he doesn't really talk or sound like that, but in his meditations, his voice is great. And so he's like, who do you want to be when you open your eyes? And I'm thinking, and I wrote that down to myself uh, on my notebook. Who do you want to be when you open your eyes? And so first I wrote relaxed and learning. Cause those are my words of the year. So of course I'm going to put that at the front. That's going to be what I think about what I say regularly. It's going to be at the top of my list, my main focus, but it's okay to have some sub bullet points and some sessions where you're really like asking, right? Asking yourself, Hey, self, how you want to feel? What are some words that describe that? Um, okay. So I had relaxed and learning, uh, clean and confident was, uh, the words, like another couple words. And that really has to do with my space. And even like myself too, <laughs> you know, it's just like keeping things tidy, keeping things organized, um, you know, laundry, like personal care, just like all of those things help me feel very much relaxed and, um, yeah. And so clean and confident. Those are some words. Uh, intentional and consistent. I also want to feel very intentional and consistent. Not like I'm a hamster on a hamster wheel or running around all over the, uh, the all over the place trying to, um, yeah, do all the things. Just very much intentional with what I'm going to do, but then consistent with those intentional behaviors. Um, coherent heart and mind. Just that feeling of knowing and and of um, being very open in my heart space and in my mind to learning and loving and receiving uh, knowledge and receiving love from others. And then loving and kind. I just think those are two words, loving and kind, that um, we're called as humans for all of us to be. I really think those are two words that... um, yeah, should be on all our lists of, of to do's for the day, right? To be loving and to be kind. And so, um, don't do new year's resolutions. Not that you shouldn't. I mean, if it works for you, great. I don't do new year's resolutions. That's not my jam. It's much more doing the word of the year and then get, getting really into the feeling of what that feels like. You know, what does it feel like to be relaxed and learning? And I asked myself this, I'm like, relaxed and learning means like being content and okay with like being in bed and spending a day in bed and watching, you know, YouTube videos, listening to audio books, uh, just learning and expanding while being in a comfortable and relaxed space. I work my physical body a lot. And I also just know and have realized, um, I require a lot of rest and a lot of recovery and a lot of like downtime on my own. And so that's really what that looks like for me. But then also like being relaxed and asking myself, what can I learn? That's also another way I've brought those two words together where it's like, okay, take a chill pill, like assess the situation, look around a little bit. And like, what can you learn about this situation about how you showed up about, you know, just what happened. Um, there were some situations where a few things I was excited about last year. Um, yeah. I mean, I could say fell apart or just didn't work out. And, um, it was really a moment where I was proud of myself too, where I really was like, okay, you know, it's not going to happen. Like this is just not going to happen because these moving parts are necessary. And now we don't have this and it's not working. Um, what can I learn about myself? What can I, how can I do better next time? You know, what can I learn about, um, people that I start to work with and do things with them? You know, what questions should I ask or things I should get really clear and clarify on, you know, beforehand, just like all this ownership, right. As much as we could, I could do there. So that was another way of being like relaxed about the situation and just like shoulders down and like, but then how can I learn? How can I grow from that situation? So that's, uh, an example too of like what that looks like exactly in my life. And so, you know, 
New Year's resolutions are cool if they work for you, right? If it works for you, it works for you. I'm always a fan of that statement because it's true. Like if that's your jam and that works for you and you feel healthy and you feel vibrant and you're sleeping well and like you're reaching your goals and you're living a life that it just feels freaking great for you, like don't stop doing what you're doing. Like if that works, great. Um, but I would, you know, bet that you know, New Year's resolutions are not working for the majority of us. And we're not taking enough time to really think like, okay, what is this New Year's resolution? What am I resolving to do? What do I say I want to do? Um, and then also I, I, you know, coach too, and I recommend leaning more into words. Words are so powerful, how we talk to ourselves, how we say we want to show up. Um, I love talking about words. I could do, I've done episodes on words on this podcast before change your words, change your world. Um, the new clean eating, um, which is like cleaning up your self talk. I've done podcast episodes on that too. I'll link those in the show notes, but it's just like words are so important and so powerful that I feel like if every day we could think of that particular word about how we're going to show up, it doesn't really matter what's up, you know, what we're up against. We have, you know, kind of that word as our, our filter, our sieve, our like, you know, saying, I'm going to, you know, be this and I'm going to show up this way. It's kind of like, yeah, I just feel like it is, um, it's, it's a great, um, it's a great tool, a super, super great tool to keep you in line, a really great and helpful barrier for the gutters. Like I talked about in that bowling alley analogy. Um, and it's, it's, you know, it's a great thing to journal about and think about regularly. You know, how, how am I showing up as this word? How, you know, what were some key things that happened today or this week that, you know, I could have really leaned in and embodied this word even more. How did I do a freaking great job at showing up, you know, learning and relaxing, uh, being connected. Um, yeah. Choose the word that makes you feel freaking fired up inside. Like the word that ignites your like inner Rocky song, you know, just like, yes, switch on. Like, that's who I want to be. That's how I want to show up. Um, that gives you that extra ump and that extra fire. <laughs> so let me know what your words of the year are word or words of the year. I would love to hear all about them and also what they uniquely mean to you. Cause like I said, relax and learn or connection or any word can mean anything to anyone. It's up to us to kind of sit in it and know what that feels like and know what it means for us. So I want to hear about it. You can send me a DM on Instagram. I'm at life like London on Instagram. Um, or if you're on my email list, you can just hit reply to any of the newsletters that I send, uh, any of the emails that I send, and it will automatically go back to my personal email address. So even if you purchase something and you got a welcome email or whatever, things that might automatically be sent to you or um, some freebies, um, no matter what email it is, you can just hit reply to it and it comes back to me. So I would love to hear your word of the year. If you're not already on my email list uh, and you want to be, just go to lifelikelondon.com forward slash calendar, pick up my free workout and mindset calendar, and you'll be on my email list for my monthly or my, um, I do a monthly newsletter. And then I do a mind body love tips newsletter every single Monday, giving you tips in my three key pillars of coaching mind, body, and love and little tools and nuggets to help you each week. Um, thank you guys for being here on the podcast. I always love talking to you. I would appreciate um, any feedback about these podcast episodes or anything you want to see more of. Same spot. Hit me on Instagram or reply to one of my emails. I can't wait to hear from you and connect with you. Have a beautiful day, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Self Love and Sweat, the podcast. Hey, do me a favor. Wherever you're listening to this podcast, give us a review. This really helps a lot. And share this with a friend. I'm only one person. And with your help, we can really spread the message of self love and sweat and change more lives all around the world. I'm London Souza reminding you that you deserve a life full of passion, presence, and purpose fueled by self-love and sweat. This podcast is a HitSpot Austria production.